The light adjustable lens. What is the hype and what is the truth about the technology? What benefits the technology has? Is it worth to invest? And would it give you optimal outcomes for your particular visual needs? Hi there. My name is Alexey and you at iwilladvisor.com channel. Well, what I can tell you about the light adjustable lens. The lens is available in the United States for a few years already, but recently on YouTube I see, uh, saw a number of videos saying that something like um, is LAL is better than VVT or is LAL a game changer and so on. So let, let me explain what is the purpose of the technology. Is it possible to compare with lenses like VVT or PureC or whatever? And, and what is the, let's say, core idea behind the technology? So let's start from the core idea. As you may know from my previous videos, any intraocular lens shall be specifically calculated for every particular eye to, to suit to a particular eye's anatomy and optical power of the cornea and length from the cornea to the retina. In ideal world, the eye should be optically perfect. So it's uh, the optical system of the eye should focus uh, incoming light rays exactly to the retina. When it comes to the eye will exchange, uh, when it comes to crystalline lens exchange to when we exchange the natural lens, we have to calculate the proper intraocular lens power. And the problem is that it's not possible to exactly calculate the power to exactly match the visual needs of a particular eye. We always have such a gap between the uh, target refraction and actual refraction, which we end up after the surgery. 30 years ago, it was really a big problem. But with years, uh, as the technology evolved, the problem of uh, exact and precise calculation of an IOL became less and less visible. However, still now we, we are not able to predict exactly the residual power of the eye and we are not able to put the lens exactly to the place it shall be. Some patients will end up with so-called refractive surprises or refractive errors. And if the patient will end up with a refractive error to get the best visual outcomes, the best visual equity for a far vision or for near vision, the patient will need to correct the residual refraction by either glasses, contact lenses or laser vision correction after the surgery. The purpose of light adjustable lens is to mitigate that risk. The light adjustable lens comes into pre-installed uh, optical powers which roughly will suit to a particular visual uh, system of the eye. And after the specific, spe special laser treatment, the lens will change its shape to adjust perfectly to the eye of the particular patient. So the main idea is to mitigate the risk, to eliminate the uh, ne needs for precise calculation, because we have an ability to adjust the lens after the surgery. What is the truth and what is the hype here? So the truth here is that we really is able to adjust the lens to the particular eyeball needs. What is the hype here? I don't know why, but the hype here is that many patients expect that light adjustable lens is accommodative lens, the lens which, which, which will change its shape to allow deeper depths of field and deeper accommodation. Unfortunately, it's not true. The light adjustable lens is a, labeled as a simple monofocal lens. And as you may know from my previous video, we have four main lens type. We have monofocal, we have enhanced monofocal, we have extended range of vision and full range of vision lenses. And the difference is a depth of field, depth of uh, area in front of your eye where, when you don't need the glasses. With light adjustable lens, it is simple monofocal lens. And in some cases, it gives you different um, additional depths of field, but it's not comparable with extended range of vision lenses and with full range of vision lenses. So don't be uh, misled by marketing or your expectation. If you want to have a better depth of field, if you want to be spectacle free at different distances, you will need either extended technology lenses like full range of vision or at least extended range of vision lenses rather than light adjustable lens. Who are the best candidates for light adjustable lens? Well, first of all, if you had previous laser refractive surgery, or you have a very short eyes, for instance, like I'm having, you might have uh, more complications to uh, calculate the lens precisely. And if you're afraid of getting the ref residual refractive error and your your aim is to get the sharpest visual acuity for far vision, light adjustable lens might be a great solution for you. When it comes to the claim on the website about test drive of your vision, it's about the monovision setup. What is a monovision setup? Uh, if a patient, for whatever reason, is not willing to have uh, full range of vision lenses, 
or a patient is not willing to pay a lot of for uh, different monofocal lens. It is uh, mo so-called monovision setup of uh, intraocular lenses when we calculate one eye, preferably for far vision with a monofocal lens, and another eye we calculate for near vision with the same monofocal or enhanced monofocal lens. Calculation should be done, shall be done in different way, but still we calculate both eyes to be targeted for different distances, far and intermediate or near, depending on the depending on what exactly patient needs. And in theory and in practice, both eyes merge the different distances, different images, and your brain will adapt to that and you will see clearly at near and at far. But uh, and <laughs> well it is popular in united states and it's not popular in uh, in europe especially in some countries because honestly if you see bilaterally so you're using your both eyes you will be more or less happy but many patients start to compare left right and they see that image quality is absolutely different and some patients don't doesn't like it plus if you work with a monovision some patients may, uh, may lose the perception the perception of depth of um, uh, field or stereopsis so in some cases you may have, may have a different difficulties doing something by hands or in some games or whatever so stereopsis or stereo perception might be affected not for sure not for every patient but some patients will not tolerate this and if it's come to refractive lens exchange if you don't have a well developed cataract you can test drive your monovision by contact lenses, not with glasses, but to such an extent with glasses. But ideally, you put different contact lenses and um, you will try. Do you like it or not? If you have a developed cataract and your vision quality already impaired, you will not feel how you mm, you will not feel the your visual experience after the cataract surgery. And it's a lot of guesswork. And for that reason, light adjustable lens is a perfect idea because it allows you to, let's say, to match both eyes for a far and intermediate or near if you like okay if you don't like it's possible to adjust but not too many times it has such a limitation so you cannot adjust your different distances of your vision 10 times and select today i want to see far next week i want to see near etc so honestly it is a great technology to eliminate refractive error and it's a great technology to give you such a test drive of your uh, different eyes. But at the same time, the technology is not able to offer you the full range of vision which different modern lenses are able to offer. And a few words about the residual refraction and is it really a big problem? The manufacturer website of LAL claims that with Eric's site LAL, they have uh, ability to reach about 70% of 2020 vision. I mean, good for vision in 70% of cases. By the way, not 100%. And about 36% of cases with a standard monofocal lens. Well, I don't want to blame or claim that they are saying something wrong. I'm pretty much sure that they have a dedicated study showing these numbers. But to be honest, from another hand, we can find a lot of studies with related to different monofocal, full range of vision, trifocal, EDF, whatever lenses showing a relatively high amount of patients having 2020, like 80% of patients having 2020 at far or 70% or whatever. Seems to be quite complicated. And who is telling truth at the end of the day? Honestly, all of them are correct because we can find a different studies with a different setup and with different approach, which will give you different results. The problem of precise oil calculation is that you have to be careful in terms of diagnostic in terms of proper formula selection, in terms of consistent surgical technique, and of course, in your aim to be precise in particular case. Because if a residual refraction is not in the target, surgeons have a number of options after the surgery how to deal with. First of all, for some patients, residual refractive error doesn't affect visual quality for whatever reason. Some patients simply doesn't care because they have a different visual experience before the surgery and they're happy with less than 2020. And it's also absolutely normal. For some patients who need exactly high visual outcomes in all range of vision, surgeon may offer or laser vision correction or other IOL types to correct the uh, residual refraction. Sometimes they can change the IOL. Moreover, some patients are happy to wear the glasses, which also corrects residual refraction and give you the best optimal visual outcomes uh, for your particular case. So as you can see, we have a number of options how to get the good visual outcomes. And my aim here to help you to understand all the options available to simplify your personal choice in what to invest and how to get the best possible visual outcomes for your particular visual needs. So please give me some up. 
subscribe to my channel and see you next video bye